Warning, this video will explain in depth how to customize best emblems for your best gameplay. Important pointers are highlighted in the video, and players like you who watch to the end of the video will see drastic increase in your knowledge of how to be a better player. Guaranteed. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it with you. Yo guys, this is your boy Assassin Dave. How's everyone doing at home? And welcome to another episode of What Pro Never Tell You series featuring the best emblems. Lots of viewers frequently ask me, Dave, what is the best emblem for this or that hero? And being a firm believer on teaching one to fish feeds one for life. In today's What Pro Never Tell You series, we'll talk about how you should prioritize your emblems to best fit the needs for different heroes, what attributes are important, and how to unlock and level up emblems as well. First, what we have to understand is in Mobile Legends, not all emblems are created equal. Basic emblems, including physical and magic emblems, are much weaker compared to the rest of the pack, so I won't even cover them. If you're new to MLBV, I only recommend leveling these emblems up to level 20 so you can have the options to unlock the rest of the pack. Do not spend any extra magic dust or battle points on it, no matter how much emblem fragments you have for this too, until you finish maxing all your other emblems first. Let's start our journey with a brand new tank emblem. This emblem is wildly popular among tank users, including silence such as Grata and Grok. We can first talk about what's most important for a tank player. Among more HP, more physical defense, or more magic defense, I would definitely say more HP is the most neutral and the universal one, since you don't know which player on the enemy team is going to pop off and carry. If enemy has full physical damage composition, for example Yuzhong, Chao, Ling, and two other tanks, or heavy magic damage for example, like Kimi, Farsight, Uranus, Sylvana, and so on, then you might consider using all physical defense or magic defense in your emblem. To put in perspective, extra 12 points of either physical defense or magic defense in early game means a lot. It's like having an extra half a pair of boots. However, the most universal tank attributes are still more HP and extra CDR, since one of the tank's biggest job description in game is initiation. Extra CDR, which means cooldown reduction, allows you to reset your skills faster and have more survivability and so on. Last but not the least, among the three emblem spells, the new Concussive Blast is just so much more cost efficient than the other two. The extra AoE damage can drastically help you with wave clear and harass. Just make sure to land this AoE damage when you have it. Here is the emblem page that I use across many heroes. Enjoy. Before moving on to jungle emblem, I know 55% of y'all beautiful people still have yet to subscribe. Well, I would have not recommended you to like, subscribe, or turn the bell on to all notification bells if this ain't the best, the coolest channel on Planet ML. We got the biggest, fattest giveaway like every day. And we got the sexy guides and live streams to show you how it's done with all heroes in rows. Yeah, that's right, hit the bell to all notifications to join the coolest fam on Planet. Brought to you by Assassin, Assassin, Assassin. Dave. Now, moving to jungle emblem. Since MLBB doesn't really have a dedicated jungle role, this emblem is largely underused. There are only a few heroes who can benefit from it, including Wonwon, Kimi, and Claude. You can also experiment this emblem on other heroes, including Hayabusa, Ling, and so on. The point is, any heroes who are useless early game, but become extremely strong late game on their own, can take advantage of this emblem, since it does help boosting your farm for quite a bit. With that being said, the two attributes that are most useless at this point are the ones that give you extra person damage to monsters and the one that gives you damage reduction from monsters. Because in MLBV, you will rarely find yourself jungle alone early game. And all the heroes who might possibly benefit from this emblem, their early game damage are too low, that any percentage damage boost is inconsequential. Lastly, I mainly use Veteran Hunter for the extra 50 gold and Mage Killer for pushing turrets and taking down other objectives. Here are two full pages of emblem that I use personally. Enjoy. Coming to my personal favorite, Assassin Emblem. There are three main attributes when talking about Assassins. Movement speed, raw physical damage, and physical penetration since Assassins are usually associated with the word nimble and burst. Assassins are not built for lonely dragged out team fights. You either go in and kill somebody and get out, or you go in and kill yourself and lay on the ground. With that being said, extra few percent spell ramp, crit chance are really secondary to some of the more important choices. Regarding emblem spells, 
Bounty Hunter is usually for heroes you know that can secure kills easily, like Lancelot, Hanzo, Ranger, and so on, with high burst damage. High and Dry is for heroes who frequently find themselves sneaking into enemy backline and quietly assassinate someone like Hellkurt and Hayabusa. And Killing Spree is for heroes who dive balls deep and can benefit drastically from a bit of HP regen such as Yu Zhong, Roger, even Yi Sun Shen. Here are the two most frequently used pages for me personally. Enjoy, guys. When we talk about mage players, once again, we can't resist emphasizing the importance of movement speed. Almost above all else, mage is one of the squishiest class in Mobile Legends, desperately needs more movement speed. Cooldown reduction is also an optional choice for some heroes who need it, such as Esmeralda and Harrod. Extra magic power can be used for late game. Extra 6 points of magic penetration is mostly useful for early game. Late game is not really useful at all, since the tankier tanks and fighters are going to be staying at 3 digit magic defense stats at this point. Here are the two most frequently used mage emblem that I use personally. Enjoy. Want me to talk about fighter emblem? Well, there is not much to be discussed over here actually, since the most used fighter emblems that I observed are actually just on Fanny for the extra spell wimp. I'm also experimenting unbending well with Yu Zhong as well, since Yu Zhong is usually fighting at about 50% HP bar and somehow sustain around that line. So having the extra 12% damage can be extremely dangerous on top of the lifesteal. But this emblem for me is still in the experimental phase and I will update you guys on any development in the future videos. So make sure to like, subscribe and turn that bell on to all notification bells so you do not miss that amazing video. I do want to make a note here about the extra physical defense and HP. Grabbing it on a fighter side lane and just watch your opponent scratch you early game only. You literally become the dirtiest person in the game. Here are the two most frequently used pages that I have, enjoy. One of the most popular emblem at the moment is a support emblem since most mages in ML are better placed as support than a traditional MOBA mid lane. When we talk about supports, there is one thing that you have to put into evaluation. The ability to constant harass and poke. In order to be as annoying as you can possibly be, you need to have fast cooldowns on your skills, fast movement speed so you don't get caught out of position while you're poking, and sufficient mana to sustain your poke. And guess what? You can find all these attributes in the support emblem. The extra HP and hyper penetration in this emblem have very little utilization compared to the rest. Just think like this. What is extra 180 HP going to do when you're getting chased by a full force you join or an assassin? Or what an extra 6 points of penetration gonna do for you since support's primary job is to harass and deal large AoE crowd control? This is why I highly recommend you consider the extra 5% cooldown reduction if you value poking frequency more, or the extra 6% movement speed if you value better positioning power in the game. Make sure to use the hybrid regen since it's so far the best thing that can happen to a support who is not going to receive much love on the buffs and the extra regeneration will definitely keep you on the battlefield for a much longer time. Lastly, all three emblem spells for supports are actually useful in different scenarios. If you are playing supports who don't deal large damage but can easily harass enemy opponents like Angela, while well, focusing mass is a great choice. And if you are playing heroes like Luoyi, Sicilian or Farsa who can benefit greatly from additional items, having the Avarice which grants you the 10 gold for each harass is a much better choice. But when it comes down to heroes who can benefit greatly from lower CDR on Flicker or Flame shot such as Kadra or Valir, using pull yourself together can deliver wonders to your gameplay. Anyways, here are the 3 pages of emblems that I use personally on different heroes, enjoy. Finally, we have come to the Marksman emblem. This emblem sets are actually very underrated since most players just build assassin emblems nowadays and run with a bounty hunter for kills. While that might be beneficial for snowball, but marksman emblem is so much better overall when it comes to late game scaling and the mobility for heroes in the team fights. Since most marksmen do little to no damage starting off the game, few percent of the extra physical lifesteal won't really help you that much. However, extra raw physical attack can definitely help you out a little bit in the early game, and extra crit chance and crit damage boosts are there for those who might benefit more in the late game, such as Irithel and Clint. 
If you are playing heroes like Claude, Carry, Wan Wan, who benefits greatly from attack speed, make sure to select the attack speed option in the second row. Regarding the emblem spell, I recommend you to use Electro Flash for most marksmen and Weakness Finder for Wan Wan. The reason for that is, movement speed being the most overpowered attributes usually has to be prioritized for heroes who desperately need it. However, for heroes who don't use movement speed at all in teamfights such as Wan Wan, due to her unique passive, getting some extra slow to make sure your prey doesn't run away is also a great choice. Here are some pages that I use personally. Enjoy guys. Last but not the least, the best way so far to level up your emblems are listed as below. Number 1. Use your battle points and tickets only to buy weekly emblem chests and lucky emblem chests. That's at least 6,000 battle points a week to purchase all the weekly limited chests. And if you want to buy heroes, well, use cash or too bad. <laughs> Secondly, if you have extra battle points, you can also participate in the standard emblem chest draw if you want more magic dust. Or you can go with the emblem metric draw if you're feeling lucky. Number 3. Do your achievements. Leveling up your achievements gives a lot of emblem, and is so far the most efficient way to level up your emblem. So get grinding guys! Number 4. Do daily tasks. By doing daily tasks, you also receive small emblem boxes which give you pathetic amount of emblems. But the longer you play the game, the more it adds up. Guys, the power of savings. Number 5. Watch Assassin Dave livestream, like, subscribe, and turn that bell on. With that guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of What Pros Never Tell You series, make sure to again like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells. I hope this has been helpful. With that, Assassin Dave signing off. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye now. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it with you, just the thrill of it.